Hey folks, Feltips here with a quick expression tip for you, number two in a series called glue a lens flare to a light and circle it, because I know that that's what you really, really want to do. Um, if ever I'm feeling a bit kind of down or a bit wound up, I just go and I glue a lens flare to a light and, and then I circle it. Um, and I feel a lot better after that. So I'm gonna help you to glue a lens flare to a light and circle it. This is uh, nothing particularly new. It's just a, a sort of my treatment, if you like, of a, of, a, of a theme. It's using to comp and from comp and from comp to surface. These are things that have been built in uh, to After Effects forever and a day. And um, you know they're there to do exactly what I'm about to show you. So this is no sort of great big original thing. I'm just gonna do it in such a way that hopefully we can get a little bit of a handle on what After Effects is doing when it's manipulating layer space. And hopefully that can allow you to sort of take these little code fragments that I show you, understand them, and then sort of employ them in different ways elsewhere. They're very, very useful, these layer space transforms. The first thing is just to get a little handle on the three uh, spaces that After Effects has. The most important one is layer space. And, um, what that means is that positions, rotations, scales, and so on of everything in After Effects, are, all the transform properties are shown with relation to that layer's immediate parent. Now, when a layer doesn't have a parent, you can see that this light here has no parent, then its position, and, and these are the numbers in X, Y, and Z, or Z as we English folks prefer to call it, space, um, when it doesn't have a parent, then its parent is the world. It's a sort of the world is a is a sort of hypothetical thing with an origin at zero zero zero, and um, that's where the position is measured from. That's a fairly easy thing to grasp. The sort of so-called Cartesian coordinates. Any position can be measured from a certain origin um, by going x along, y up, and z back and forth. Z that is back and forth. Now, supposing I uh, take a null object and um, I parent, I make the light the child of that null by pick whipping the null as the light's parent. These numbers jump, but if you look up here, let's just unparent it again, the light's position is exactly the same as it was before, but the numbers have changed. That's because we're now measuring the light's position not relative to the world origin, but to the position of its immediate parent, null 5. Let's just unparent that, and let's just change the coordinates of null 5 to 0, 0, 0. There it is, 0, 0, 0, the After Effects origin stuck up in the top left corner, a bit weirdly, but anyway. Let's now parent the light and look at these numbers. Look at how they don't change. Because before it was parented, if you like, to the hypothetical world with its origin at 0, 0, 0, it's now parented to null 5, also with its origin at 0, 0, 0. Hmm, okay. Well, let's shift null 5 over, say, uh, 200 pixels. You'll notice that the light position has actually moved. Watch it moving on the screen up there as we go over to... Uh, well, let's go to minus 200, so we leave it on the screen, shall we? Minus 200 pixels, and the light is now here. But those numbers haven't changed because its position relative to its immediate parent hasn't changed. If we unparent this, Kaboom! This one goes down to 562, and we're now once again looking at its world space. Change null 5's coordinates back to 000, zero, zero and reparent it, and those stay the same, because 000, zero, zero is also the coordinate of the origin. Okay, that's world space and layer space. Easy peasy. Composition space is even easier. The best way to describe composition space is the sort of flat coordinates uh, from the point of view of a 2D layer as a... Uh, as the camera looks at it, and uh, you know, your composition coordinates are what you see up here in the info palette. X and Y, right up there at zero, zero. Right down here, it's 1280 by 720, the size of the comp. In the middle, it's 640, 360, so on and so forth. That is composition space for you. Three spaces. What After Effects shows you is the layer space, which can sometimes be the same as the world space, and for a 2D layer, can sometimes be the same as the composition space. For instance, this layer's anchor point is at 64360, measured from the origin of the layer in the top left, and that is also the composition space, as measured in the XY over there. Whilst that's in the uh, same position, whilst that fills the composition, then 
layer and composition space are identical for this 2D layer. Okay, so hopefully we've got a little bit of a handle on that. Let's get to the nitty gritty. How do we glue the lens flare to the light? Very, very simple. What we need to do is alt-click the stopwatch, uh, pick whip the light and put that into a variable called L for light or L for layer, whichever. And all we need to do is take that light and measure its position in composition space. So all we have to say is, I'll put it into a variable, LC, LCP, light composition position, something like that. LCP equals L dot to comp and then the anchor point of the layer. Lights don't actually have an anchor point, um, so just put in 0, 0, 0. That's kind of like the light's anchor, if you like. And um, there you go. Our lens flare just jumps to the position of our light. How about that? Let's move the light around a bit. Yep, looking good. Back and forth in Z space. Very good. Let's make a new null object. 3D one. Let's parent our light to it. Let's do a bit of the old rotation. Yep, fine, because what it's doing, it's taking the light's layer coordinates and it's bringing that into composition space. Very good. Now, how about if we do, uh, if we make a new null and we parent the lens flare layer to a null as well. Let's just pick whip that. Ah, oh, perfect. There you go, stays in the same place. And then let's just move the null over and oh dear. Didn't work, didn't work, didn't work, didn't work. Well, the reason is that we are measuring the light's composition space and that's all very well when the uh, lens flare is filling that space. But if I do anything to it that makes the layer space of the lens flare layer and the uh, composition space different to one another, then unfortunately, um, that composition space is no longer valid. We need that value in layer space and indeed in the lens flare layers layer space. So it looks like we're going to have to add another line of code. Let's um, pop this into uh, another variable. We'll call it L layer position. And all we've got to do is say this layer, because we want it in this layer's layer space, from comp, which takes it from comp into the layer space, and then we take that value LCP that we calculated before. We take this value in composition space and we take it from composition space into this layer's layer space. Ping, yep, there you go. You see it jump, let's just zoom out. Our lens flare uh, is now in the perfect space and let's try sort of scaling this layer. Yep, it's staying there, we'll rotate the layer, Bingo, we'll go to the layer's parent and we'll move that around and we'll rotate it. You just can't budge it. Whatever you do, no matter how you try to break it, uh, everything parented up as, as sort of complex as you can get and that lens flare sticks to that light like glue. Didn't I tell you, isn't that satisfying? Isn't there something weirdly satisfying about that? Well, maybe not. Okay, well, if that wasn't enough for you, <laughs> if, gluing, if gluing the lens flare to the light wasn't enough for you, just you wait. We're going to circle it now. Let's make a new solid, 400 by 400 pixel. Remember that, that's important. Magenta red solid. Okay, we'll make it 3D. Let's give it a little bit of a rotation. Let's uh, offset it in space just a touch and let's scale it, you know, let's do some things to it. Very well and good. And actually, um, as we're talking about it, anchor points themselves are measured in layer space. They are measured in the layer space of the layer that they belong to. Now, all layers have their origin point in the top left-hand corner. And as you can see, if I put the anchor point at 0, 0, the anchor point is now at the layer's top left-hand corner. If I put it at 400, 0, it's now in the top right-hand corner. And at 400, 400, it's in the bottom right-hand. 200, 200, of course, it's in the middle, but the anchor point itself is measured in the layer's space from the top left-hand corner of the layer. It's an important thing to remember. And that's actually true of any um, effect, such as a circle effect, where there are so coordinates that uh, the uh, center of the circle here is also measured in the, in the layer's uh, layer space. So let's just go to make that a, um, a circle that's a, a ring. 
let's make it about yeah it's about the right size let's just put its uh, center at zero zero let's just make it so it comps onto the layer itself and make the layer a little bit translucent and you can see now that the circle is now sitting at the layer's top left position its origin let's just switch into the uh, local axis mode because what we're looking at at the moment you can see is the world axis uh, x to the right y up and z into the screen that z uh, in the local axis, we can see that the axes correspond to the layer. And let's just sort of take that uh, circle and let's put it at 400, 0 or thereabouts. It's now in the top right hand corner. And you can see that all of these things, anchor points, circle coordinates, blah, 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 are measured in the space of the parent layer, the layer that is the containing layer for that anchor point, for that circle so on and so forth. Stop me if I'm getting repetitive, but this is a really important thing to understand. And once you've got an intuitive understanding of this, you'll find yourself manipulating layer space and circling lens flares all day long. Okay, let's get on. We want that circle to circle the lens flare. Whatever we do with this layer, we shift the layer around, we want the circle to stay circling the lens flare. Let's hijack this code from over here. Let's uh, put it into the center um, property of the circle effect. Kaboom didn't work. Oh dear. Well, that is because the um, composition space going from comp, the, oh, let me start again, the from comp kind of assumes that you're dealing with a 2D layer. And if you want to project a composition space onto a 3D layer, it's very simply a matter of using a different um, method, a different, uh, a different function, if you want to call it a function. And the function is from comp to surface. It's that simple. We just change the from comp into from comp to surface. And hey presto, our circle jumps to exactly uh, circle our lens flare. So there we go. Got a bit of translucency on it. Move the layer around. That circle is glued to where the lens flare is. Let's, uh, let's scale that. Let's rotate it a little bit. Let's do whatever we like. Let's make a parent for this one as well. Let's parent the magenta solid to this null eight and let's rotate that a little bit. And you can see, okay, it's flexing around. It's, uh, it's getting a bit bigger and smaller and, and so on the circle, but it's essentially centered solidly onto that lens flare. Okay, we come back here, we move the, uh, move the lens flare around. You can see the circle cuts off once it goes off the layer. Of course it does but it's essentially sticking. Let's uh, rotate the lights parent, null six. Okay, same thing, perfect. Let's uh, move that layer, I don't know. I mean, you're probably getting the idea. You can pretty much do whatever you like and all of that stuff, whatever you do, is sticking together. The light, the lens flare, the circle are all stuck to this point in the composition and you've glued it all together. Now, doesn't that make you happy? Well, a little bit. Um, it's what you do with it at the end of the day, and I don't want you to, uh, here we go, let's have those up on screen so you can screenshot them, but don't just stick them in a preset and copy and paste them, memorize them, understand how they work, and then you can employ them for yourself, and you'll find yourself adapting them to do all sorts of different, and trust me, very, very useful things. There you go. My name's Felt Tips. Thank you very much for listening. I hope that makes some kind of sense. Um, I'll be back soon. See you later.